And I remember I saw this, I saw the original version um, the first time in a drive-in. It was during the pandemic. Yes. Oh, taking my mama and we saw it in a drive-in. Yes, okay. that was an experience. What did we saw for the first time well, in a drive -in when it was released? I remember. In drive -in. I remember because they showed the footage of y'all watching it. At the, I remember all of that. I remember yeah, it so yeah. vividly like it was yesterday. And that's one of the reasons why I was excited to talk to y'all today because I think there's nothing more powerful than someone using their life as an example to help others. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you all have done that. Like, what was it? I, I think you said, Rob, or maybe you said it, Fox, that advocacy has the power to Dang to change God. lives, but it can come at a cost. Mm -hmm. And we got to see what it cost y'all. Yes. But having said that, when you also said to be free is to free others, what made y'all pick up the mantle and make sure that over 25,869 people got their lives back. Yeah. Well, it is 25,000 years of time yes. that we have saved across yes. this country. Mm -hmm. And it is because of 40 other hubs that are doing the work like we're doing here in Louisiana, Carla, of people, everyday citizens, not waiting on someone to come and save us, but waking up using tools of community, a community think tank, uh, a love for justice. And uh, a faith and a belief that one person can't really make a difference. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Tell me how did you all start the particip participatory defense movement or was it already started and you all became a part of it? One of the hubs in Philadelphia, which was one of the first to start, um, the elder there, Dr. Dorothy, was mentioning it to me. And I was like, oh, my God, that sounds incredible. I was like, as soon as I get my husband out. I am going to do this. I was like, but I got to get him out first. I can't focus on anything else. And so the next year, 2018, Rob came home. Six months later, we got trained and launched our hub here in the state of Louisiana. And we've been saving lives and saving time uh, ever since then. Mm -hmm. uh, our first campaign was Mama Glow, the longest serving woman in the world. And um, um, being able to be activated, having met her when I was in prison myself, and then to be the one to come back and uh, finding out that she had a pardon hearing coming up, Rob and I knew we had to help. We had just gone through the process. So certainly if we could do it for mm -hmm. us, then we had to do it for somebody else. Right. And so uh, Mama Go had been gone from her family for 52 years and for 52 years. Uh, her sister, Mary, stood by her side, never giving up on her. I knew how it was to stand beside or with Rob for 21 years. So I just could not fathom. I was so amazed at the fortitude of family that they had still visiting, putting money on the books, um, um, taking collect calls and writing letters 52 years later. Mm -hmm. So to know that God could use us to help bring her home to her five surviving children, she lost one of her children uh, a year right after she got um, the pardon, but um, um, lost one of her children the year she got after she got the pardon, but before she made it home when we got the governor's signature. I don't know. You got me excited. I'm, I'm going to let you talk <laughs> back now, Carl. You know what? Listen, Fox, I dig you because you say what you mean and you mean what you say and you don't back down no matter what. I can respect that and I can relate to it because I'm what? Exactly the same way. <laughs> Boom. Like recognizes like. Okay. Okay. But Rob, since Fox says she has been dominating the conversation, what you got to put into it? <laughs> I was just thinking when you when you started out uh, the question, it, it took me back to something that I read uh, from uh, from Toni Morrison, and she said that the function of freedom is in freeing someone else. And with that, you know, when you think about what that, you know, actually means, uh, it means, you know, that you have a duty and an obligation uh, to give other people what it is that you have and or want for yourself. Mm -hmm. So having freedom and wanting freedom for myself, I had spent over 20 years with uh, men locked up inside of uh, Angola State Penitentiary. I knew them dudes a lot better than I knew family members that I shared blood with. You know, I'd sat and made tuna fish sandwiches with these dudes and uh, split a bag of chips and, 
you know, uh, uh, cooked up a soup and, you know, put onions and all this other stuff in it and I attempts to try to make a meal. You know, and when you have those types of experiences uh, with people, you get to meet people where they are and you start to realize that they're bigger than their crimes. More has happened in their lives than the transgressions that brought us in that space together. And knowing that, I know that I had a duty and an obligation if God had blessed me to be free. I knew that I had a duty and an obligation to not only free myself, but to free someone else. Shut little Belay. Y'all ain't speaking tongues. He's going to make me shout. <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm like, what you doing speaking in tongues, sis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I did, it would sound something like that. In the that. Project church. Stop playing, Fox. Stop it. I, I meant to get my pearls, but I was running a little late today. But I want to know what is the significance of you wearing pearls all the time, Fox? Uh, pearls are only made through harm, Carla. And uh, it was Mother's Day, 1999, where I was home on bond. And um, we realized that this was really something else we had gotten ourselves into. He had trial in two weeks. And Mother's Day weekend, he went out and bought me a pearl necklace and a pearl bracelet and some earrings. She had a fit, Carla. And I cut a fit. <laughs> I'm like, we is broke. We just told him that. <laughs> Go spending money on some pearls. It's probably cost like a gazillion dollars. <laughs> and we going to travel. We're about to go away. You know, I'm just like really panicking. And lo and behold, will be the last gift that he's able to buy me for 21 years. Mm. And uh, and so I treasured those pearls. And then the more I understood, you know, when I would put them on, it was a small strain. And when I would put it on, people would be like, oh, you look so classy. They just made me feel better. And the more I studied pearls and understood that a pearl can only come through harm when the oyster is um, harmed, then the pearl is created. And so it then reminded me of my life. Mm. So much harm had been caused at my hands and at the hands of the state I love. But at the end of the day, look at the beauty that God has made from my harm. I did want to talk about this, though, because this made me laugh out loud. And this is not a funny documentary by any stretch of the imagination. But baby, in them end credits, when it said my two dudes left the bench or left the board after oh. the decisions that they made for you and, and your nephew, I hollered out loud because I'm like, wrong, no wrong. They knew they was wrong as two left shoes and somebody called them and made them accountable. But how did you, it was in the end credits. So we don't really know how you felt about that, but I want to know right here and right now, how you felt about that. Cause I know how I felt about it. I wanted to go turn a car wheel down the street. Listen. Time three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for helping us share this story. It is so much bigger than Rob and I. Uh, it is a calling for us to understand and have our spirits convicted that we must do something about this issue. No other issue right now is more pertinent to our people than ending mass incarceration and removing the exception clause from the 13th Amendment so our people can finally be free. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't I can't think of anything else to say after that. I mean, Fox, you didn't you didn't just ended the interview for me. I can't. What am I gonna say after that? Nothing. That you gonna come and, see us in New Orleans? <laughs> uh, listen, honey, don't don't put an invitation out for me to come get some gumbo and do a second line. Don't play. Do not play with me. Don't play with me. Listen, in all seriousness, it's my wholehearted pleasure to be able to share my platform with you. I didn't get a chance to talk to you the first time around, so I wanted to make sure that I spoke with you this time around. I know the film is gonna be showing at the Essence Fest and you're gonna have some things going on down there. So congratulations and much, much love and success um, when that happens next week. But, you know, I support us. And especially mm -hmm. when we are supporting ourselves and not falling into being victim to ourselves. That's you know right. what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, 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 it's been my pleasure to talk to y'all. It's been my pleasure to support you. It'll be my pleasure to talk about the film and review the film and put a spotlight on it for others to see. It is totally my pleasure. And God bless both of you. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Dinner and drinks on us when you make it to New Orleans. Listen, I'm telling you, don't play. <laughs> we love don't company. Don't play with me. I will be on a plane to New Orleans. Especially going, Curvy playing. Company. Knock, knock, knock. Especially Curvy Company. Bring them curves on, Daddy. <laughs> Listen, honey, if y'all got somebody that the Curvy Critic can meet, hook a sister up, honey. <laughs>